How can we use the Ken Palm stats to make game predictions for the NCAA tournament? What's up, everybody? This is Kerry. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a Ken Palm prediction formula to pick every single game of the NCAA tournament. Now, I did this a year ago in 2024. I entered 25 brackets in the ESPN Bracket Challenge, and here are the results for my top three brackets. Look at the one down here at the bottom. Connecticut 01 Ken Palm is a full Ken Palm bracket where I use a Ken Palm prediction formula to predict every single game. And this finished in a 93.8 percentile, which is really good. Now, when you look at the rank, that's 1.5 million, but there's over 22.6 million brackets last year in ESPN Bracket Challenge. So 1.5 million means that this bracket beat out over 21 million other brackets. So if you want to get a leg up in your bracket pool, this is not a bad way to go. Let's take a look at the Ken Palm stats. Here are the Ken Palm stats for March 9th, 2025, updated after Saturday's games, March 8th. And one more time, we're going to use the stats right here, the net rating, offensive rating, defensive rating, and adjusted tempo to make our Ken Palm prediction formula. I'm going to show you how to create the formula using an Excel spreadsheet or even a Google Sheet. But before I do that, let's look at the actual predictions it made for Sunday, March 9th. The first game here is Bradley versus Drake. Now what we have here are the Ken Palm stats right here in the middle. This is based on the Ken Palm stats as of March 9th, 2025. You can just simply put these numbers in. Everything here in yellow is an input to the model. Over here, the predictions are the tempo. That's a very important stat that tells us how many possessions we expect each team to have. The actual score outcome, so Drake 64 to 60 over Bradley. The total is really simple. Just take the scores and add them together. The spread is also simple. Just take the opposite score and subtract the current score. That's because we want to have a negative number for the spread. So Drake is actually a negative 3.2 favorite here in this game. And I realize it looks like this should be a minus four and a plus four, but these numbers over here are rounded. These are not. And the spread numbers are exactly what we're going to use to make the win percentage. This is the main feature over here on the far right hand side. This is what we want to use to predict who wins each game in NCAA tournament. Now over here on the far right hand side is a snapshot of the actual predictions made by the Ken Palm website. And look at this right here. We have 62% for Drake. It's exactly what it says over here, 62%. Now it did say 65 to 62. Over here I have 64 to 60. That's because I have a 58 for the tempo and they have a 59. So I'm not exactly in agreement with the Ken Palm output right here, but it's really, really close. In fact, the Ken Palm formulas are proprietary. So no one knows exactly what these formulas are, but I can tell you right now that the formulas I'm using here are very, very close approximation to the actual Ken Palm formulas. The next game is Arkansas State against South Alabama. We have a 70-67 score and a 61% win rate for Arkansas State. And look down here. This is a Ken Palm prediction, 70-67 and 61%. That's exact match. So I know my formula is again, very, very close. Down here, Washington State versus San Francisco. We have San Francisco 80 to 74. Ken Palm has this at 79 to 73, but again, it's a 70%. So far, all of my win percentages match exactly. But because I have a tempo that's a little bit higher than the Ken Palm, the margin of victory is actually what matters here. And that's the spread. That is fed into the win percentage formula to come up with these numbers. Down here now we have North Alabama at Lipscomb, and we have a 59% win rate for Lipscomb, 74 to 72. This is one, let's just call that a glitch in the matrix, because I don't know why this is so far off. I have a pretty close tempo rating here. The numbers are actually a two-point spread where he has a five-point spread, so it's going to be a higher win percentage for the actual Ken Palm prediction. And finally down here we have Furman and Chattanooga. These are all tournament games. We have 76 to 74, and this is a 57% win rate, and this exactly matches the Ken Palm prediction. I wanted to mention here, all the games I'm showing you are tournament games for these conferences. And I'm using these because I don't have to worry about the home court advantage number. That's another input to this model, which I'm not using when I look at the NCAA tournament because all the sites are going to be essentially neutral sites. If you want to see the spreadsheet and the actual formula, stay tuned. I'm going to show you that next. However, if you're just interested in the outcomes. You just want to see the answers. Let me just tell you, I'm going to use this model to predict the SCC tournament this week. It's like a precursor to the NCAA tournament. There's so many great teams in the SEC, we could really kind of use that as a test bed for this particular formula. Then finally, I'm going to do this on Sunday night. I'm going to put out the full Ken Palm bracket based on this prediction formula on Sunday night, right after Selection Sunday. I'm really looking forward to doing that. So if you just want to wait for those videos, have a good one. I'll see you then. All right, here we go. And like I said, my spreadsheet just has one game. It just makes some predictions for one game. I enter the teams over here. I'm going to use the Arkansas State versus South Alabama game today. My actual predictions were spot on. They exactly match the Ken Palm predictions. As I mentioned, these are numbers, a net rating, offensive rating, defensive rating, adjusted tempo that you can get straight off the Ken Palm website on the public facing page. So you don't have to have a subscription there, but I do highly recommend it. While I don't necessarily like to pay for data, this is an excellent website, the Ken Palm website. 
and he has blogs and all kinds of information there. So I would highly recommend that site if you're interested in advanced analytics for NCAA basketball. Okay, the first prediction is in column K, the tempo. This one matters a whole bunch. And as you saw in my examples, my tempo was not exactly the same on all of them, but it did match on most of them. I got it really close. So for the predicted tempo right here in cell K4, I'm listing the cell over here and then the formula right next to it for each of these predictions. The predicted tempo is basically the number of possessions we expect each team to have for this game coming up. And we look at 69.8 for Arkansas State and 63.3 for South Alabama. And over here on the far right, I have the league average, 67.4. So this team plays at a faster pace than league average. South Alabama plays at a slower rate. So what we do is we take the gap between the adjusted tempo for one team, subtract the league average. And we do that because South Alabama plays at a slower rate. We'd expect that to slow down the Arkansas State tempo. So what we end up doing here is taking Arkansas State's tempo and then taking the difference between South Alabama and the league average and adding that to South Arkansas State. That will produce a negative value here because their tempo is less than the league average. That so basically reduces Arkansas State. Now the same thing happens down here. This is the same formula, but we take uh, South Alabama's tempo plus Arkansas State and take this gap. And because this number is actually positive, that adds to South Alabama's. So we actually see then the predicted tempo is a little bit higher for South Alabama. These are the formulas in column K. This is the column K right here. And that's how we estimate the expected number of possessions per team. And let me say last year I actually did this where we multiply the two together and divide it by the league average. I'm pretty sure Ken Palm does not do it that way. He actually says on his website that he thinks basketball is more additive than it is multiplicative. So what it really boils down to is a simple calculation. You just simply take the sum of both tempos and subtract the league average. That's all you do. Okay. Now the score prediction is a little more complicated, but it makes a lot of sense when you break it down. Let's check it out. The score for Arkansas State is simply the, their offensive rating. That is the number of points per 100 possessions. Add that to the defensive rating for South Alabama. That's down here in H5. And just like we did with the tempo, we're going to subtract the average, the league average for offensive rating. That's 107.3. Now this time we divide by 100 because these are the number of points scored and allowed per 100 possessions. So dividing by 100 gives us the number of points scored and allowed per possession. And then finally, this is why the tempo is so important. We multiply that by the number of possessions. The expected number of possessions is the expected tempo. So multiplying it by K4, that's the cell right next to this one, gives us a score for Arkansas State. So here are the formulas for column L. Now the big payoff for working through that formula is the total is very simple. You just simply take the two scores and add them together, right? It's really easy. So in M4 here, I have L4 plus L5. And I know this is redundant down here. I have L5 plus L4, but I always like to do that simply to make sure that each row is full of data, right? And the actual numbers match just to make sure my formulas are correct. Okay, so that is column M, the total. The spread is also an easy thing to calculate. You simply take, in this case, the opposite team score minus the actual team that we're looking at here, their score. Because the spread value for the favorite team has to be negative, you simply take the opponent team score, subtract that from the actual team score there, and that's how we get the spread. So this is L5 minus L4. The one below that is L4 minus L5. So that is column N, the spread. We went through all the major formulas here. and got the tempo, the score, the total, and the spread. Now let's look at the final one here, the one that's going to matter when we pick our games in the NCAA tournament. That is the win percentage. Here it is. The win percentage here for Arkansas State is simply the norm distribution. So that is a normal distribution. We expect that the spread, the actual margin of victory, is going to be normally distributed, which it is. Because we had to flip that sign for the spread, but we actually want the positive number for this normal distribution here to be for the favorite team, we simply flip the sign from negative to positive again. And because this is a normal distribution, we're going to have a mean here of zero. We're going to have a standard deviation of 11. This is a number I had to look up. This is on the Kimpom website, on other websites as well. And then finally, we want the cumulative distribution. That gives us the total percentage of scores less than the current value. And that gives us 61%. We're going to do the same thing down here for South Alabama. It's negative N5, which is a cell right next to it, 0, 11, and true. And that gives us 39%, which makes sense because we're going to add up to 100% here. And that's the win percentage. In particular here, since we want to pick the game winner for each game in NCAA tournament to fill out our brackets, we're going to simply pick the team whose win percentage is above 50%. That's it. Hope you enjoyed this video and got some value from it. Like I said, I'm going to actually put out a SEC tournament bracket predictions based on this Ken Palm formula. I'm going to publish that video on YouTube. I'm really looking forward to that. Have a good one.